all right all of you tomorrow is a big day for the cat exam right so quickly let's go through you know what you need to carry over here um simple three simple things right so one is your admit card print it out second you need an original photo in case you don't have it and that photo has to be the same as what's in the admit card in case you don't have it just go down and print it tomorrow first thing right so get it printed it's not going to take too long quickly get it done and you have to affix it uh, next to um, i mean there's a provision given over in the admit card you know where to do that right and uh, admit card should it be a color print or not black and white is what i go with it's fine if it's too much of a worry just get a color print and go go ahead black and white is perfectly fine uh, the third part over here along with that you need to carry only one but it has to be original and valid photo id what is valid over here the driving license could not have been an expired license right like wait for a passport uh, so if it's a pan card there's no expiry right or other so you know that typically people go with the other over here they just carry the original play it safe right so don't go into too much get into too much tension over here and all of that these are the ones which are stated uh, i'm this part over here is not very comprehensive as i've given in the note please refer to your admit card download read the instructions understand what's given over there and follow it right so what can you not carry for the exam a bunch of things first up you don't need a pen and writing pad because it's going to be provided for you over there right so you can't be carrying your own favorite pen or writing pad and all of that don't do that uh, no calculator there's a screen calculator given over there no mobile phones electronics once again there are a bunch of items which have been provided in the um, admit card on what you cannot carry please refer to that another notable thing over here are watches or jewelry or like you know items containing metal uh, you just can't right so earrings and all of that you can't uh, a lot of times they uh, ask you to remove that likewise a lot of centers they tell you to remove the footwear especially those with thick soles and all of that uh, just remember that you have to keep it outside don't worry about it. a lot of times you have to be bare feet while writing the exam also garments with large buttons once again uh, read the uh, list which is provided in the admit card and what you cannot carry as well having said that um, it's best for you to uh, one know the route beforehand right for most of you the uh, test center is going to be quite far away from your house that's how it is typically it's in the outskirts of your cities or wherever you're from right um uh, probably it's the first time you're going to be traveling to that place so know the route beforehand also plan to reach on time right do not be late uh, especially those on slot one who have to start early right just plan for this accordingly so therefore keep your documents ready by saturday which is today so keep it in order just make sure that there's no uh, but don't don't be you can't be running around the last minute and all of that and therefore at the end of it uh, have a calm mind and a very light saturday yeah so what should you avoid over here right um, again uh, four items of course as i said carrying prohibited items just read through the admit card list again what you cannot carry uh, second is a mindset issue right Do not go with a fixed target for any section we don't know what's going to be tough or not right so although there are some paper predictions and other stuff you just don't know what's going to happen in the what's or how the paper is going to turn up right don't go with a fixed target there is no defined cutoff or anything like that at the same time also do not set exceptionally high targets right doesn't make sense paper is not going to go perfectly for everybody we'll cover this later in this video right and do not panic if a section is tough if it's tough for you it's tough for everybody so on the exam day reach on time yeah if possible reach one hour ahead all right and uh, avoid delays in registration or panic all right so what happened in cat 2023 in a lot of test centers there were some delays in the biometric scan right uh, so therefore people who reached a little late that is 15 20 30 minutes before the uh, test starts but i started um, there were some delays in their registration it, it went on during the exam as well in some test centers if you want to avoid all of that, as it is, the exam is stressful. To, to, and we don't need to unnecessarily add stress to the whole uh, process, right? So just reach on time, uh, by which I mean about 45 minutes to an hour comfortably before the test starts, right? And if there is an issue with your computer, monitor, or mouse, just get it replaced. If you reach in time, you can ask them. Tell them that I have an issue with these. Please fix it. Nobody is going to say that, no, bear, you have to somehow live with this monitor and you have to figure, manage with the screen or the mouse and all of that. They will definitely get it replaced if it's not working properly. Next up is a very important thing. Do not overhydrate. Uh, although in the admit card it's stated that you can take a bio break and you can come back and you'll be losing time. The timer will be running. They'll frisk you again and all of that. It's generally a stressful, painful process. Manage the water. Yeah. Uh, do not carry 
uh, valuables of gain. You'll be wondering whether if it's safe outside and all of that, just keep it in your houses and come down for the center. Now, very important for you, right? Very important. If you're reaching on time, you have enough time and all of that, you'll have a lot of time to read the instructions. Very often, if there are any pattern changes, they will mention. Uh, DILR, they've been changing the pattern every two years. So the last two years, we've had a certain pattern. There might be some changes, there's some hints again. Uh, you never know, it could be a, there could be a pattern change in quant or verbal as well. Generally, it's mentioned in the instructions, right? So before the exam starts, read through the instructions, read as to, you know, what the cases are going to be like, whether it's going to be a 66442 or a 5555, whatever it's going to be. Uh, generally, it's mentioned or it might not be as well. But at least get an idea, all right? Get an idea from that. If it is mentioned, you'll have an advantage over the rest, right? especially the ones in slot one, right? And lastly, um, there might be disturbances in the first one to two minutes uh, because they'll be announcing, they'll be saying that everybody, please start, I mean, hit the start button, start taking the exam and all of that. Um, so, so don't lose your focus. Um, just do, I mean, your verbal section you're going to start with. Uh, you can do um, uh, probably um, one of the VA questions, right? Um, or if you think you can manage it, just start off with an RC and be confident. All right. So now onto the sections over here, right? Uh, specifically, VARC, you have to start with that. And you have to go at a brisk pace, right? So just make sure that you know, the reading is good and you identify the author's view properly. I think uh, by now you would have been prepared the right way. Uh, stick with your strategy and how you've been solving it and all of that. And uh, choose easy VA questions based on your strengths. Never know as to what's going to be easy and not. Right. So just do look to attempt the VA questions as well. Don't go in with the strategy of just that. You know, I'm going to attempt only RCs and avoid VA and all of that. There might be easy VA questions as well. Right. Be ready for that. Now, when it comes to DILR, right. So far, you've been going very, very fast with VARC. When it comes to DILR, you've got to immediately apply the brakes. Slow down. You have to go really, really, really slow. Just think about it logically. In VARC, you can you can do skimming. You don't need to know the exact you know word to word meaning for each word or the sentence and all of that. As long as you understand the author's point of view, it's fine. But when it comes to DILR, you again have case based questions, and if you misread a clue, if you overlook a condition, and all of that, you're going to be going in circles. You're going to make a mess out of it. So VARC, you go fast. You go in the fifth gear. When it comes to DLR, you slow down and go in the first gear, right? Go really, really slow. Uh, so if you're going to be going slow and you're starting off with the section, uh, pick an easy case, right? What's an easy case over here? It's what students keep asking. A short case. A short read is typically going to be slightly easier for you to capture the conditions and all of that. A graph-based case, right? Or a DI case with a table and all of that generally tends to be easy. That's how it's been in the past as well. You could rely on that. It always could be a tough one as well, but you don't miss out on an easy case. And when it comes to a graph based case, again, another thing for you to remember, the scarier the case looks, right? It looks very difficult, or probably it's an easy one. They want you to overlook it and avoid and run away, right? But uh, the, the more scary it looks, right, um, uh, the more complex it looks, it probably is going to be easy. Why would they be giving it to us, right? So just try it out, yeah? And lastly, simple numbers, right? If they all have multiples of 10 or like, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a numerical reasoning based case, simple numbers do look to begin with that as well, right? As compared to tough numbers. Lastly, uh, you have to slowly work with the clues and you need to remember there will be conditions probably given at the start of the case, indirect conditions or clues given in the, um, you know, the pointers over there. Uh, so just make sure that you have to work with the clues along with the conditions given to you in the case. Do not miss out on that part and be careful. Yeah. Next up, when it comes to quant, you can speed up. Okay? Probably go in the third gear. You can't go very fast. Every word, every sentence matters as well. But these are singlet questions, right? One question at a time, and they are naturally they're going to be shorter than your DILR cases. Uh, so here uh, we have a MarCat 688 strategy. Just um, search for this on YouTube. We'll also put the uh, link below in the description. I refer to that. That's something which has been working for a lot of our students. In case you're already adopting that perfect, good, perfectly fine, just go ahead with it. Um, if not, you have some other strategy which is working well for you, continue with that. Do not change right now, right? And uh, lastly, uh, so pick up the speed and you have to learn to let go of questions where you're getting stuck, right? Somewhere you're getting stuck, you've just misread something, it's just not working out, let go of it, mark for review and come back to it after the question. You might look at it with a fresh uh, mind and you might be able to solve it very quickly.
lastly what i've been emphasizing right uh, for a long period now for a long time now right you need to get into the warrior mindset right i made a full video on that that's running over here right so um, what's this about right so there is no perfect attempt right there's no perfect attempt do not chase one uh, my percentile in this in a, in a couple of cats have been 99.98 and my attempt was far from perfect they were good great attempts right but not perfect no exam no attempt is going to be perfect don't chase one there will be setbacks five to eight minutes might be wasted 10 12 minutes might be wasted you might feel they are wasted no that's normal it happens for everybody the remaining 28 30 minutes have to go perfectly for which you need to have this warrior mindset the battle ends when the battle ends when the timer ends right till then it continues you've got to be fighting exam again as i said will be having ups and downs you have to accept it there will be downs during this exam nobody is going to have a perfect up 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 like perfect exam it's not going to happen right accept it embrace it fight back right stress over here is going to bring out the worst don't get it into your heads just somehow keep it out right um, how do you keep it out once again watch this video if you can and go with the warrior mindset um might, might sound a little uh, harsh but yes you cannot die crying you can die fighting that's fine but you can't be dying crying in this exam what do i mean by this let's say the exam didn't go well it didn't go well because you picked the wrong case or the wrong questions um, you just made bad decisions during the exam that's fine but you can't say my exam didn't go well because i got stressed out i panicked and all of that what are you preparing for right so go into the positive mindset get onto the warrior mindset there will be setbacks fight back and win this exam all the best